local history, local culture, local events, your community. This is the Joe Kelly Show. Hi there, everybody. Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Frank Tomeno is our guest. Whenever Frank's in, we talk about local history. Today, we're going to be talking about Christmases gone by. Old-time Utica Christmases. And before we do that, though, Frank, we're going to say welcome. Always good yep, to see you. Great to be here, Joe. I, I should give you an introduction. Sometimes I forget to give you an introduction, <laughs> thing, figuring that everybody knows who you are. But Frank continues to write his history column for the Observer Dispatch. He's a local historian and author of history, just for the fun of it. Um, let's talk about downtown Utica at Christmas. Let's define downtown first. Oh boy, that's a tough one. Everybody has his or her own opinion. Um, I would say Genesee from Bag Square south to South Street. Um, where the Firestone Station is. Yeah. To me, that is really, and of course, the side streets, mm -hmm. um, Bleecker, Lafayette, Columbia, uh, just, you know, uh, Devereaux, Blandina, for about a block or two. Mm -hmm. uh, many disagree. Uh, for instance, I don't consider the public library in downtown Utica or, or Munson. Mm -hmm. They're part of Oneida Square, as far as I'm concerned. Others disagree with me. But to me, downtown Utica, uh, what I call downtown, would be, uh, you know, again, from Bag to South Street. Yeah, yeah, I wrote a column the other day for the uh, Sentinel and for the Boonville Herald, and I, uh, when I defined what I considered downtown, I, I said it's open to uh, some interpretation. Oh, sure. Uh, but in my mind, a downtown goes from, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rethink it. Um, and maybe go back to what you just said at the at the uh, tire place there on South Street. Firestone, yeah. But what I said was it went from uh, uh, the Stanley Theater down to uh, Oriskany Boulevard and the side streets. But we're yeah. close. Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, if, if I'm talking about the 30s and 40s, where Lower Genesee Street from Oriskany to the Bay Square area. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of commercial stores there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so Lower Genesee Street was really part of downtown Utica. You know, even the side streets, like uh, if you remember Burgers Department Store. Very well. Yeah. Well, I never considered Burgers as part of downtown. Mm -hmm. It was you know, the downtown area. Uh, but again, you know, yeah. many many disagree. Yeah. Well, let's start, and uh, we'll go down uh, uh, starting at Grant's Bookshop, which was uh, just north of, of uh, the Stanley Theater. Yep. Great bookstore. Oh, in fact, for a long time, it was the only bookstore in downtown Utica. Yeah. Later, the Boston store had a small bookstore. Yeah, Grant's was um, uh, on Hopper and Genesee on the east southeast yeah. corner. And it had um, uh, the first floor had a basement where you had books too, and then a little balcony you had you had books there too. And it was a gift shop too, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but all kind of books. And I re you know um, I don't know if they still do this, but when I was when I was going to school, you know, you used to rent like when you you knew the courses you were going to take, and you would you know rent some some of the books. And Grant's bookstore in the basement when I was a kid used to have the school books that you could you know, pick up mm -hmm. 10, 15 cents, you know, history or English or, so, or whatsoever. Um, but yeah, Grant and Grant was always a busy, mm -hmm. whenever, I used to go there a lot, I'm sure you did. Yeah, yeah, I love that always, always busy, people yeah. browsing, you know. Another store I loved was uh, just across uh, the street uh, going north, and that was the Little Coat, am I pronouncing? L the hobby, hobby shop? shop, yeah. Little Coat. Little Coat Hobby Shop. Little Coat Hobby Shop. It was on um, uh, on the east side, uh, just below the Masonic uh, home there. And uh, 
that was at a lower now, level, right? You know, a little cod. And I think that you, you walked into, as I recall it, Frank, you walked into a little, uh, not a hallway, but because you were outside, but yeah. you had the little coat hobby shop on this side, and then I think a shoe store on the other side. Yeah, I forget what was on the other a side. A little court-like. Yeah, I know just above it was the uh, Christian Science, Science. reading uh, rooms. Mm -hmm. um, it was, I don't know, it was, there, was, there was something, you know, before the, I'm, I'm talking before the malls came. Um, uh, there was something magical about downtown, mm -hmm. especially around the holidays. Yeah. Uh, the exterior was not so decorated. I don't remember the streets being decorated, or, but the stores were all, and those stores had big windows. They were all decorated, the Boston store, the, the Five and Dimes, and mm -hmm. J.B. Wells. Mm -hmm. it, was, it, was, uh, it was a busy place. You know? the, uh, the really, the uh, anchor of downtown you just mentioned, I think, was the Boston oh, store. There's no doubt about it. I think... You know, we're talking about it. I'm talking about a time now, the 30s, 40s, and 50, early 50s, when downtown Utica really was the commercial uh, center of, of central New York. It, uh, not only commercial, professional, uh, entertainment section. Um, uh, you had, I remember I did a story when the first National Bank building, now the Adirondack Bank building, was sold. You no, know, 14 stories. And I remember I did a story probably in the early 60s. And I, and I did some research. In that building alone, there were 62 lawyers, 40 law firms, 62 lawyers. In incredible. There were 35, 40 restaurants in downtown Utica. Some, you know, uh, big ones, bars, um, Bowling alleys, movie theaters, we've always talked about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Pool halls. Yeah, oh <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it, 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 downtown attracted, I mean, your villages in Rome had their stores, don't get me wrong. But downtown was the big attraction, and the big attraction downtown was the Boston yeah. store, there's no doubt about it. You know. Seems you mentioned the uh, Adirondack Bank building, which was first the First National First Bank. National Bank, yeah. Uh, I think that's where I registered for the draft in that, uh, Is that right? building. I think that's yeah. where my draft board 49, I oh, think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the draft board was there. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say that uh, uh, the crowds that were downtown in the area, in the year, years you're talking about, tremendous crowds. Well, yeah. And again, um, now, most of the stores during the right were clearly used to close at 6. But on, during the holidays, they were open Monday night till 9 o'clock. <laughs> in December, downtown Utica, uh, on Monday nights, uh, the sidewalks were so crowded. People, uh, not only there were bargains, but there was just something, like I say, magical yeah. about it. Yeah. I remember... Um, I used to do a lot of shopping in Wicks and Greenman. Wicks and Greenman, when it was on, um, I knew later on Genesee, but when it was on Franklin Square, you couldn't even get in the store. It was so mm. crowded. <laughs> There's a lot of men's stores downtown. In fact, when we come back, maybe yeah. we'll talk about some yeah. of those men's yeah. stores. Yeah. Frank Tomano's our guest. We're talking about Christmas going by in downtown Utica. Short break, right back. And welcome back, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us. Frank Tomano is our guest, local historian, and we're talking about some downtown history, downtown Utica. Frank, uh, you mentioned Wicks and Greenman's. I remember when it was on Franklin Square. I remember when it, when it moved to... Uh, uh, Genesee. Yeah. Oh, just, just below Woolworths. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, 
but and it was a it was a very um, I'm going to say upper end yeah, uh, yeah. men's store yeah. uh, and not the only uh, men's no, store no, downtown. No, you had webs, um, webs on um, across from the old city hall. Uh, just, just trying to think. Uh, so that it would have been on the east side of Genesee Street. On the east side, yeah. On the in fact, you know, it was a funny thing. Uh, mo the majority of stores were on the east side. There were stores on the west. Uh, yeah. On the west side. Don't get me wrong. But for some reason, all the five and dimes were on the east side. The Boston store, J.B. Wells. Mm -hmm. Some of the shoe stores. There were a lot of shoe stores. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Webbs and uh, uh, I'm trying. You know, uh, Cons Men's Store, Glicks. Uh, the one I remember was uh, two come to my mind. Oberman's. Sid Oberman. Yeah. Oh yeah, Mr. Downtown. Yeah. 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 Uh, just off of uh, Genesee on Bleecker. Yeah. 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 And the other one I remember, uh, because I was in scouting, was my boy's shop. Yeah. Uh, upstairs yep. they had the clothes, but downstairs yeah. they had all the Boy Scout stuff. Yeah, that was a little upper Genesee Street. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think it was just above the Stanley too, if I'm not mistaken. No, it was just no, above what, Bank Place. Just oh, okay, a, yeah. Just above okay, Bank yeah. Place, yeah. Yeah, I remember Reed Sheldon. Yeah. Reed Sheldon was another store. Uh, you know, mainly a gift store. They had purses, leather goods, and all that. Um, but <laughs> Around Christmas time, yeah, busy. I remember when uh, when they moved, when the malls started coming in and some of the stores start moving. We Sheldon moved to the new Harper Shopping yeah, Center, mm -hmm. and it was their something like their 125th anniversary. And I decided to interview Nick Sheldon, who was the, I think the grandson of the one of the founders, and. Uh, Boy, he really felt, he said, you know, we hated to leave downtown. We, we were forced to, you know, all the traffic was, mm -hmm. the malls were getting popular. And he said, but uh, he said that he would never forget downtown, you know, the loyal customers and busy places. You could, you could buy anything downtown. Yeah. You know, like we mentioned the Boston store. That was truly a department store. You, could, you know, fur coats, uh, jewelry, Records, shirts, yeah. Yeah. anything, yeah. Um, the Boston store was, uh, again, on the uh, east side of Genesee Street, yeah. uh, just uh, north of uh, uh, Bleecker Street. Yeah. And uh, it truly was a full-service department oh, store. How oh. many floors were there, Frank? Five. Five floors. Yeah. Uh, and I remember before, when it first opened, there was no, it had no, that later was an, they had an escalator. The first store with an escalator was Woolworths. And I remember when Woolworths opened, um, at that location in, on the east side between Bleecker and Elizabeth. Uh, oh, I'm maybe 41, 42, but we heard they had an escalator. We didn't know what an escalator was. And it was in the back of the store. I'm sure you were on many times. Mm. And I remember as a kid, a lot of times in the summer, you know, we'd go downtown and Sometimes you just go on the escalator, go up. You had to walk down the stairs. And that, was go in, down. that was an interesting thing, wasn't it? You yeah. could ride the escalator up, but there was no yeah. escalator coming back down. There was down. a stair down, and in the front of the store, there was a stairway down. Mm -hmm. um, but the Woolworths, the Five and Dimes were, were always busy. You know? The thing I remember about uh, Woolworths, I want to go back to the bus there in a second, yeah. though. Uh, the thing I remember about Woolworths, a couple things. The lunch counter. Oh, yeah. It was... I think there were 82 seats, and of course it had little tables in the front. But all the cooking was down there in the basement. It came up with a dumb waiter that mm -hmm. brought the food up. Mm -hmm. uh, lunchtime, you, you couldn't even get a seat. It was so popular. Yeah. You know? And yeah. Um, they had uh, uh, a, they had all kinds of stuff. They had a like a pet department where you could buy fish and. You know, in the back, they had canaries and. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, Parakeets and turtles, and the the best candy counter I've ever seen. Yeah, it, was, uh, it was the only place where you could buy chunks of chocolate. You could buy like a two pound chunk of chocolate. They had the right, but it was, uh, when you when you first walked in the store, mm -hmm. the aroma of that chocolate is the first thing that hit you because <laughs> they had two big counters, and uh, 
again, all, always, always crowded. You know. And you know, talk about aroma drawing in. Um, I remember on the west side of Genesee Street, and I'm trying to think of what it was between, uh, the caramel corn shop. Oh, well, the caramel corn, I remember the caramel corn, uh, oh, wait a minute, um, if I'm not mistaken, that was just at, at, in the Franklin Square area. Yeah, um, I'm not positive where, it was. I know it was on the west side yeah, and of Genesee. There was Genesee. one all next to the Olympic Theater too. Mm -hmm. There was a caramel corn. Of course, there was Fanny Farmer's candy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was on Genesee. Yeah. Uh, and then you had also, you had the nut shop. The nut shop, yeah, that was um, where Seneca and Genesee, it's a, it's a point across mm -hmm. from, uh, uh, at that time, Marine Midland Bank. Yeah. yeah. And, and then the places, Frank, I'm, I'm thinking uh, the Maxwell House. That was across the Stanley Theater. Right. The Maxwell. You know, people, there had to be thousands of people working downtown in those days. Before I'm going again before the malls. Mm -hmm. You know, all your auto dealers were downtown, uh, restaurants. Um, so there was thousands of people. Most of them had hour lunches, mm -hmm. and you know they they went to the you know the, all the five and dimes had lunch counters. We mentioned Woolworth, Kresge's, and Neisner's had lunch counters. Yeah, uh, the Boston store, of course, had. Yeah, the, they know. called it the Mohawk Room, if I recall yeah, correctly. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, was that the basement of? Yeah, the, and uh, near the Mohawk Room in the basement of the Boston store, and that was the Obbins, right? Their name just came to Sam mind. Sam Obbins was the uh, general manager. Yeah, yeah. and uh, he was big in Utica. Sam Obbins, oh, running, yeah, yeah, very. very uh, and then later, um, his son mm -hmm. and um, uh, daughter-in-law, anyway, uh, or his wife. Mm -hmm. Oh, they were very active in community affairs too. Yeah, yeah. 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 And um, the Toyland that the Boston store had was downstairs, downstairs in the basement yeah. near the uh, uh, Mohawk yeah. Room, and they had a Santa. Yeah, uh, you know, I was just thinking, Boston store, you're right, had a Santa, and I'm trying to think that Five and Dimes didn't, J.B. Wells wouldn't have a Santa. <laughs> uh, uh, Burgers had a Santa Claus. But not many stores had, had, had the Santa Claus, but they were all decorated and mm -hmm. the window displays. People went window shopping and you don't hear that term yeah, anymore. I know, yeah. But they used to walk up and down Genesee Street just to look at the, at the window decorations. When we come back, we'll talk about two things that aren't really related to, to Christmas, but I, I, okay. we're talking downtown, so we've got to talk about them. Okay. Helen Hoffman being one of them. <laughs> Frank Tomato is our guest. Short break, right back. And welcome back, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us. Frank Tomano is our guest. We're talking about downtown Utica as it was back in the day for Christmas. Before I get to uh, Helen Hoffman and the other thing I wanted to talk about, you mentioned uh, automobile dealers. I did, you know, I, when I think about downtown Utica, I don't think about that. I mean, they, there were several automobile dealers downtown. I would say, 80% of the automobile dealers were, 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 were downtown. Yeah. You know, now of course they're all along commercial drive. But Dow Motors. Bought my uh, first car there. Yeah, Dow Motors, uh, uh, Fords, uh, uh, Harry Hyman, H.O. Johnson, uh, McGrory Sawyer, uh, Deppin. Uh, C.J. Fletcher. C.J. Fletcher, Fords. Yeah, in fact, C.J. Fletcher became a big Republican he became uh, commissioner of public work of, of the Department of Motor Vehicles. The state, he was the state commissioner. A you know, good friend of Frank Dolan. Frank Dolan 
before he was mayor, sold cars there. Mm -hmm. uh, Fletcher was just, just above the Stanley Theater. Do I recall correctly talking about Frank Doolin, Mayor Frank Doolin? Did he also, prior to his car selling days, did he deliver ice? Oh, that, yeah, he delivered, yeah. yeah. Okay. Navy veteran. I, I, I have a photograph when, during World War II, a bunch of Navy guys from Utica were in Hawaii after Pearl Harbor. And his picture's there. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's mm -hmm. so nice. Yeah. Um, Helen Hoffman, <clears throat> she was a character. Oh, yeah, sold newspapers, magazines. Comic books. Comic books. Uh, for years, she was on uh, Columbia Street at the, she set up a, sh a shanty, a shack. Yeah. Uh, next to the bank, and uh, cars would pull up, and, uh, and uh, you know, she, uh, but then, of course, later, uh, I forget who took over the bank. Why the, the, this is the old Marine Midland Bank. The old we're Marine Midland about. Bank, yeah. yeah. And they wanted her to, they wanted her to move. She did. They used to cause traffic because the cars used to pull up and stop, and uh, uh, it, it was a traffic problem. But she moved. She never paid rent or anything. <laughs> she just set that up, and and for years, yeah. um, uh, she moved across the street at a bus stop, <laughs> and and. That caused a lot of problems, and finally they forced her to move, and she retired. Yeah. But she was, she was a character, little little lady with her brother, always uh, um, not must have, not uh, dressed in rags exactly, well, but she, <laughs> not dressed very no, fashionably. No, no. She wouldn't make the cover of Vogue or anything. Yeah. yeah. You were telling me this, Frank. I hadn't seen it myself, but you were telling me up at the United County History Center they've got some. Photographs of yeah, her? Yeah, I was, I was there recently and uh, they have a painting. Somebody painted it and it's huge. A painting of Helen Hoffman and it's really a, a great job. And um, Patrick Reynolds uh, 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 of the center uh, found some photographs and there's seven or eight photographs. So there's a, a mini display mm -hmm. of Helen Hoffman. I don't know how long it's going to be up there, but the painting is. It's really impressive. You know. Yeah, I got to get up there and see that. Yeah. The other thing that uh, doesn't come to most people's mind that has nothing to do with Christmas, but I, for some reason it, I found it to be a unique part of downtown, and that was the uh, uh, public restroom that was downtown. Oh, the Comfort Station. The Comfort Station. Yeah, it was on, yeah. it was on Elizabeth Street. Yeah, just uh, a few steps in from uh, Genesee. Genesee, yeah, right. In, between the old school administration building in Genesee. About where the parking lot now is for Adirondack yeah, Bank, right? right? Yeah, right, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, you, uh, uh, again, you know, most of the stores did not have restrooms. Uh, uh, Woolworths had one at the, at the- And I think you had to pay though. You had to pay, it was a dime to get yeah. in there. Yeah. So uh, the Boston store had, had a restroom, but the five and dimes didn't, I mean, the uh, Kreskies are, so, when you gotta go, you gotta go, and yeah. and it was at, it was at a lower level yeah. for men and women, uh, but then the city just neglected it. It was run by the city. The city just neglected it, and uh, they decided to tear it down, which they did. Yeah. yeah. The um, uh, I'm trying to get back to the boss's door. Yeah. Uh, they had um, record department. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, book oh, department. Yeah, the the book department not when they opened, <coughs> but later it was on a upper level. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but um, they also had elevators, but not self service <coughs> elevators. Yeah. They they had people operating. Yeah. So did J B. Well, J B. Wells. I think to the day they they were on Genesee Street had two elevators with elevator operators. Yeah. And. Uh, I seem to recall, unless it's in my <laughs> mind wrong, I seem to recall uh, women operating those bus and store elevators wearing gloves. That I don't remember. All right, yeah. 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 It might be just pop <laughs> into my head. <coughs> yeah. You also had, uh, talking about Christmas downtown, you also had on Franklin Square a red mailbox. Oh, yeah, for Santa Claus. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah, you had, uh, I don't know if they have that anymore. I don't know. Yeah. I, I can't remember it, yeah. but uh, I remember it back in the day. Yeah, you, you send your uh, kids would put their envelopes in that, and 
Yeah. Way to get to Santa. And then on the side streets, I mean, we're living out so many stores, but on the side streets, uh, uh, <coughs> Lafayette was filled with stores. Lafayette and Columbia. Again, we, we were talking about what is downtown Utica. I remember when I was city editor, you remember the reporter, Dan Knorr? Very well. <coughs> Something stuck in my throat. Um, he wrote a story and he mentioned, he said, Grimaldi's restaurant in downtown Utica. So I called him, I said, Dan, I don't think, Grim I wouldn't say Grimaldi's is in downtown Utica. He insisted. <laughs> yeah. And later, I, I took it out, but later I talked to some other people. They considered. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't, but no. that's, that, that's. Too that's far part. over. Yeah. That's uh, part of East Utica. Yeah, but you're right, Lafayette Street, um, uh, Columbia and, Street. Yeah, and then you know, Frank, oh, we got to remember Christmas, Play World. Play World, Play World was on Columbia. Yeah, Play World was, uh, uh, I think there was a second floor. Yes, so I'm, there I'm was. Play World. Uh, any kind of a toy oh, they, yeah. they had there. Yeah. And uh, of course, they were always busy, but around Christmas time, they were, because really, there were, I'm, again, I'm talking when there were no malls. Uh, that was the place yeah, to go. You yeah. know, you know. A lot of good memories. A lot of good memories. Thank yeah. you, Frank. Yeah. That's going to do it for us this week. We'll do it all again next week. For, uh, don't forget to uh, go to cnyhomepage.com. There's a lot of good stuff there. Until next time, take care of yourself, everybody.